Oh, yeah, right. That's 3LH. Yeah, so he's calling for 3X AX. He's apparently a, uh, a pal of them. So right. um, uh, I could give him a call if you like. Oh, if you like, yeah. Uh, BK3 UH, BK3 UH, BK3 JO. Heard you calling um, uh, Eric there, um, Ross, and I've got a visitor in the shack at the moment, so I thought I'll give a call and uh, see how you're copying. And hopefully the noise that I've been complaining of is, uh, at the moment, that's running a bit higher than I normally run it. Uh, it doesn't make much difference anyway. Hopefully uh, we're not burbling because I haven't got the headphones on. Anyway, VK3JO standing by for VK3UH. Yeah, VK3JO, um, uh, VK3UH. <coughs> <Pardon> me. <coughs> oh dear. Yes, uh, good afternoon to you there, um, uh, Herb, and also good afternoon to your uh, your visitor there too. <coughs> Pardon me. For um, just um, been running the set there and. Uh, to get going, uh, uh, and uh, glad that uh, you've uh, actually uh, caught up with, um, with Herb there. Okay, I was going to put it back to you, Ross, so I'd better do it without delay. VK3 um, UH, VK3 JO is standing by. Oh, wrong one. VK3 UH. Uh, returning, yes. Okay, very good, and, and very good afternoon to you there, David. I've only got, I've got a lend of, a, of an A-channel um, mixer at the moment. VK3JO, VK3UH. Uh, yes, OK. Uh, VK3UH, uh, VK3JO. All OK. And uh, oh, I've just put the headphones on. <laughs> and uh, the various noises going on there. I seem to have a pair of pliers that's been vigorously... Um, and I think I might be uh, a little bit too much with the modulation. I'll just turn that back a little bit there. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, right, uh, right, uh, Dave. Well, the main thing is the Type 3 Mark II. It can, this is the transmitter unit. The meter uh, will indicate the uh, antenna current and the device, the coil and condenser there, is a wave trap to cut out 80 meters. So that's basically the 160 meter transmitter. Uh, the device uh, that I'm trying to move out of the way so that the camera can get a little bit of a view of the uh, in there. Uh, that's uh, that's a ZB2 homing adapter which I adapted for two meters in uh, the bygone days, immediate post-war period. It uses uh, acorn, valve, acorn valves. There's uh, 954 RF stage, 954 RF stage. That one was originally another RF stage, but it's been converted to a um, mixer and an, um, an oscillator uh, stage there. So uh, that has an output which is. <laughs> It has an output which unfortunately isn't the same as the uh, the uh, frequency as the output of the other converter, but it's still it does work. I had it going the other day. By the way, in this gadget in between the two of them is the microphone that I normally use on 160 meters. Uh, in there, that's a homemade thing from uh, once again Jeff 3AUX. Um, that's where that came from. <laughs> Homemade. The uh, well, just on, another 20 seconds or so, and it'll be fine. I think. On the bench, uh, a couple of meters, um, multimeter homemade device, and crystal set really there, next to it. Um, so uh, I think that's about cuts it out. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, there. That's excellent. Good. Try and grow a few veggies in this area. A few herbs. <laughs> I'll talk to the uh, the father of 160. You, you mind being called the father of 160? Uh, oh no! Are you the, are you, yeah, I, I think I'd be the most are senior you, are in you age. The most, you're the senior citizen of 160. Yeah. I would think so. In 93. Yeah. <laughs> a lot longer than her. 
Have you? Yes. Oh, yes, we'll have a debate here now. So who? Yes. I don't know who's been on the one. Well, who, Herb's had a Herb's probably had his license longer. So <laughs> how, long, how long have you had your since your since 1933? Yeah. And John, what about? Uh, 50, 52. Must be 51. Oh, well, we'll call it you. Oh, well, I can wear the cloak. <laughs> yes, you've got the crown of, uh, yeah. And do you think 160's changed over the years, or do you think 160 is 160? I mean... Oh, it has changed, of course, because, uh, Oh well, uh, no, I didn't get into it until about 1972, and uh, I mean John's been into it long before then. So um, you know, it's a bit. <laughs> which way do you look? He, he's been on 160 longer than I have. So um, now, for a period there, I wasn't very active at all. Just you know, discovered ham radio by accident, really, because I just oh, right. used yes. to play with the shortwave radio. Yes. And discovered mm. these people talking to each other and oh, I see. worked out what it was after hearing Wallace Institute broadcasts. Oh, I see. So, yes. yeah, I came yes. across, I really found the hobby by accident. Yes. Uh, right. Just hearing people chatting, so I wondered what, what it was all about. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, <coughs> but you're I started uh, listening to radio when I was still at school and um, it was an article in a publication called PALS that had uh, how to build a crystal set and uh, of course there was no actual regular broadcast in those days. The, um, uh, the um, um, uh, coastal radio service uh, was going of course and uh, amateurs were also going uh, but the um, uh, it was really before there was any regular broadcasting although that did start again later on in the same year 1923 uh, of course we'd been interested in it and we'd been building receivers and that sort of thing and uh, we could hear the amateurs talking and of course we uh, knew there was uh, a WIA so um, it was my late brother who attended one of the WIA classes and he got his course on first <coughs> and uh, <coughs> oh, well at that stage um, it was the sort of depression years and built a simple a simple little set just uh, and the CW using CW and of course then I got my license while he was away so it was a nightly thing instead of writing letters to each other with yes. uh, yeah. CW uh, of course it was all home built stuff and um, uh, radio. yes <laughs> all valve of course so um, we um, uh, uh, yes, uh, well, I was li still living at home with my parents, I had no thoughts of marriage or anything like that. Uh, and uh, of course I joined in with the WIA too, we used to run a shortwave listeners group there for a start and that was where we learned quite a bit. Uh, but uh, after I'd been operating on 40 metres, I think 80 metres, homebrew AM equipment like modulated oscillators and simple receivers and so on. So I was using five metres right up until the start of the war, closed yeah, down. Yeah, so there's no but TV or anything in those days, was there? No. It? no. It was empty space, was it? Yes. Yeah. You're interested in ham radio, or are you the only one? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Right. VK3JO. JO, By yes. the way, are you... The, uh, is there a history to the call sign? Is it, are you the first owner of this particular call sign? Uh, no, there was another chap who held it before me. And um, at that stage, we used to get, I uh, think, from the W uh, from the ACA as the well, well the controlling authority. Yeah, they had um, so many name changes. I forget too. Uh, yeah. Lists of amateurs, and I did notice that the original owner of the uh, uh, JO call hadn't renewed his. So uh, I thought I'd grab it. Yeah. I don't think I told you that my brother, when he got his call sign, he was 3 OJ. <laughs> when, I, when I noticed J.O. was uh, free, I grabbed it. <laughs> oh, well, so there you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Now, are you recording all this? Oh, well, ask Dave. Is Dave, are you recording all this?